The early access of Path of Exile 2 is right around the corner, and with that I mean around the corner of next month, which is going to feel like an eternity. With this much time left, I was forced by my own free will to make this video and tell you that you really should play Path of Exile 1. Even if the game released back in 2013, which also feels like an eternity ago, the game has been updated regularly, not only visually, but also added a ton of content. In this video, I will go over two types of players. This might make it easier for some of you, but also Path of Exile 1 is its just too ginormous. So one type of player is the gameplay enjoyer and the other is the lore enjoyer. Path of Exile 1 is great for both types of players right now and it's free. Maybe after this video I gave you that little push to finally try it out or get back into it if you have been waiting for Path of Exile 2 since late 2019. Has it really been five years already? Let us start off with the first group, the gamers that play a game for its gameplay. I broke it down even further because some players like to play simple games that are easy and don't require a bachelor degree in engineering. Looking at you, satisfactory players. What the heck am I looking at? To be fair, Path of Exile 1 compared to other games is more complex and requires some action in the brain area, you know, the, the, the noggin right here, which is very small for me, as you can see. <laughs> the reason why you need some brain juice is because it gives you a lot of control and options to do whatever you want. So you are not locked into one type of playstyle like in many other games. For example, just because you chose the big bulky guy at the start of the game, which most people see as the typical warrior class, that doesn't mean you only have warrior-like skills to play with. Let us start slowly and simple. Maybe you are the bread enjoyer. No, you don't have a fever dream. This, this is still the Path of Exile video that you clicked on. <laughs> you enjoy yourself some basic ass bread with butter, cheese, and meat. You don't need some fancy food, even if you can enjoy that as well. Most of the time though, you prefer something quick, simple, and fulfilling. Path of Exile is exactly that. You don't need to overthink anything if you have a basic archetype in your head. Maybe you enjoy minions and controlling a bunch of monsters. The witch, which has an affinity to dead stuff, is probably the right choice. Then grab everything on the skill tree that says minions. Thankfully, there is a search bar in most interfaces in the game to help you out. It's also Control plus F as a shortcut. What if you enjoy fire and burning enemies from further away? Choose the ranger and grab every fire node and see what happens. Last but not least, play as the classic two-handed Giga Chad. Choose the Marauder, pick up that two-handed weapon, try out the different skills in each act that require a two-handed weapon and bonk enemies. You might want to grab a few two-handed weapon nodes, physical damage, and maybe even some area of effect on the skill tree. At the end, it's all about hitting mobs, getting loot, hitting stronger mobs, and getting better loot. Rinse and repeat. But what if you enjoy a bit more than just bread? You could be the hobby griller. You enjoy preparing food, letting it marinate for multiple hours, and then let it slowly take color on the grill. You don't mind if it takes a bit longer, because you know, you'll figure it out and get some tasty food. If you already enjoy hacking and slashing enemies in Path of Exile, it gives you all the tools to make your build even better. Some power comes throughout the story and the first 10 acts, but a lot of power can be gained in the endgame. 
this is where you truly need to figure out your build to properly bonk those enemies. The end game has many bosses and maps or areas that can be played over and over to get better loot and to keep it simple, more crafting materials. These crafting materials can then be used to upgrade your build and have nearly screen-wide AoE or maybe just shoot many, many projectiles everywhere. So if you enjoy your build until the end of the story, there is even more power to be earned in the end game. It won't be quick, but after many hours, your build will taste delicious. I mean, your build will Bruh. feel good. Now, if all this sounds interesting to you, but you still want to go even further beyond, you might be the professional cook. You are beyond basic bread. You weigh out every bit of ingredient, take your time at the grocery store, take a stroll to your local butcher and prepare an amazing meal. If you love having all the options in games and precisely choosing every upgrade and looking over all the modifiers on items to make the perfect build, you can't go wrong with Path of Exile 1 but you will most likely fall down a few rabbit holes along the way. Path of Exile has the classic kill mob and get stronger gameplay loop, but you also have pinnacle bosses in the endgame, which also have uber versions of them, which can drop some of the most valuable items in the game. Not saying the bosses in the story can't be great or even difficult, but if you needed more, there is more. To kill those crazy difficult bosses, you might need to figure out crafting or meta crafting, which is a rabbit hole I won't even jump into. Until now, I didn't even mention specific league or expansion content that you can specialize yourself in. Like Blight, which is a tower defense minigame, or maybe you want to help Jun defeat the Syndicate by manipulating the members to get certain loot and unlock special crafting options. Hmm. I have to be honest though. You look like someone who likes to go deep. Delph. Delph is an endless dungeon in which you go down. Really, really far down. With each depth, you get closer to this number, which is the maximum depth, which was reached by Shitstain Steve or streamer Third Twister X earlier in 2024. My god, these names. <laughs> to not spoil you even more, there are a few more leaks and thus rabbit holes to fall into. So if you enjoy gameplay, Path of Exile 1 has it all right now. It's also free, but how free is it really? I went into that rabbit hole myself a few months ago. Check out this video, link in the description. Now, this is all neat for players that enjoy gameplay, but some enjoy story and lore in games. They want to be connected on a deeper level beyond just clicking buttons, seeing monsters fall over and explode in a pool of blood. If that resonates with you, not the blood thing, you might be a lore enjoyer. The AI Summarizer. I understand reading is hard and takes time, but thankfully Path of Exile makes it quite easy to get the gist of the story in the first acts. It can be a bit strange later on when you start gathering organs, but if you read the quests in the world map UI, you should be fine. Quest items and uniques can also have flavor text, which adds depth to the world of Path of Exile. So even if you care about the feeling of a game and more or less the story, but don't want to watch and listen to boring ass five minute long cutscenes like in many JRPGs, <coughs> Final Fantasy 16, <coughs> Path of Exile 
might be the game for you. But, 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 but listen, what if you enjoy long-ass cutscenes? Well, PoE doesn't have that, but it sure has a lot of dialogue that you can listen to. If that excites you, you could be the audiobook enjoyer. Reading is still not your cup of tea, but you don't mind listening to dialogue. You might even enjoy it. The NPCs have a lot to say, and many of them have amazing voice acting if you want to absorb the story and lore of the game. Mervale dwells in the caves beyond the Rex, at the head of Siren's Cove. Leave her be. The rise and fall of the gods, the ebb and flow of corruption, the life force. These things are all interconnected. Never trusted a blackguard in my life, reformed or not. Never have, never will. That bastard Gravisius and his psychotic disciple Chimeria. To save the future, the past must be sacrificed. It's sometimes a bit difficult to get all the info in one place, which is on purpose. The game isn't meant to be a book or movie like many AAA games. I'm going to butcher his name, I'm so sorry. Matt Dumersky, who is one of the writers for Path of Exile 1 and 2, said in 2019 during ExileCon that the storytelling of Path of Exile 1 is a combination of choose your own adventure, a torn up history book, and an encyclopedia. You might ask, why the heck is it this way? Okay, maybe not this loud, I'm sorry. In an ARPG, not everyone reads everything in the same order. What if you skip past vital information? What if you just don't do a side quest and keep on moving? Because some just want to slay enemies and not be stuck in a spot and listen to an NPC speak for five minutes. On top of that, you, yes you, you are not the special protagonist in this game. This is not a story written about you or even told to you. You are writing your own story. You are the exile. You have been shunned from society. Spoiler, you aren't the good guy. <laughs> The video from Matt I showed earlier blew my mind on how the story is written and how they manage quest lines. I highly recommend watching the video. After this one, of course, please stay. But if you ask yourself, is there more? Well, yes, there is. And you might be the librarian. You are a god amongst lore enjoyers. You want to know everything about every character and their connections. You might even start drawing a timeline of the different catastrophes that occurred on Rayclast. You are the one freak in your friend group that stopped slaying spiders and actually read the Lusty Argonian Volume 1 and 2 in Skyrim. If you are that person, Nice. Uh, you'll have a lot to read, listen to, and theorize about in Path of Exile. Not every question will have an answer, and sometimes might even create more questions than answers, but the world of Path of Exile has been building up over the past decade. A tiny spoiler, but a boss in the story said this is an illusion exile. And from past expansions, we know the Rayclast we play on is our dimension. There are other dimensions beyond this one. What could it mean? Maybe you will find the answer in the Atlas. Maybe you come across a new language by some blue Martian beings. Or maybe you are just curious about the logo itself. The Mirror of Calandra. The answers might be out there for you to figure out. But if you go on that journey, just don't forget to stay sane, exile. Thanks for watching.